Hello and welcome to DNA Software Scan Demo. Today we'll be working in Visual Amp and we'll be doing a multiplex design. So we have our sequences that are in the sequences window already. They're DNA double stranded targets and we set the concentration to 100 femtomoles. Next we'll go to experiment conditions. We'll select our CAN demo conditions, which are 60 degrees Celsius, 50 millimolar monovalence, and 5 millimolar magnesium. Next, we go to probe primer design. In probe primer design, in the drop down menu, we can select primer pair. Done that for all three. We select the target. So in this way, Visual Amp knows that during a multiplex design, it will design a primer pair for glabrata. It is very specific and sensitive to glabrata that will not mishybridize to albicons or experience, and so forth with the other primer pair designations. I set the TM at 65. The length for the top is 30. The others are 25. And we can leave the default concentration for the primer set at 100 nanomolar. If you go to the toolbar, and again we hover and it describes the function of the button, we can open our advanced parameters. Within the advanced parameters, we have control over the size of our primer and nucleotides. So, for instance, we can set an optimum of 30 nucleotides for our Librata primer a minimum of 25, and a maximum of 35. The next row that you would generally deal with is duplex TM. Since we are operating at a, an annealing temperature of 60 degrees, we're going to set an optimum TM of 65 and a minimum of 60. The next place that you would look is typically in the amplicon size. This is how we control our amplicon size for each of these uh, amplicons. And in this case, I'm asking for an amplicon that's at least 100 nucleotides long, has an optimum of 100 nucleotides, and a maximum of 150 nucleotides. All the rest of these are thermodynamic settings, and the general settings do work on a broad scale. So they'll typically work for 99% of the designs that you'll do out there. So once we have the design set up, we have experiment conditions set up, and we have sequences set up, make sure that all of the targets in your multiplex are checked on. We go to the toolbar, select Run Design. So the progress bar opens at the bottom, and we see that uh, we do have progress in designing highly specific and sensitive DNA primers for each of our targets in our multiplex. So we just wait for it to finish. And open our results. So we see that we have a threeplex. So we're expecting to get six different primer pairs, or six different primers in three pairs. So we see that the first six is set one. And in fact, Visual Amp supplied many different sets. There's uh, 50 sets. That's the maximum number of design sets it'll design. But notice that as we set the uh, length, to be 25, or in a case of code rata 30, and that the optimum TM should be 65, those designs that are closest to that design criteria rise to the top. And we see, in fact, we have 30 for glibrata, 25, and 27 for the primer length. And then also the TM is typically around 65. So this set did rise to the top. The other thing to notice in a multiplex design, if you're using probes, is where the position is 
of each of the strands. So the sent strand is going to be at position 204. So that's the three prime end of the sent strand. Or the anti-sent strand, or the forward primer, relative to the sent strand will be in this box. So this is going to be position 98, but that is the five prime end of the forward primer. So if we add 30 to that, then we, we're going to be in 128, 204 will be the actual gap. So that'll be the amplicon gap that you want to provide a, a primer design for. And it goes the same way for each one of these. So we're from 260 to 246, and then 223 to 298. So just remember to add the length of the primer in order to get the design gap for the probe. So once we have those uh, numbers, we can highlight primers, add them to the experiment, and they will come into the sequences window. So we've already given the concentration for each of the primers. It knows that they're primers and it knows what their targets are. So they're all listed here under intended target. So the next step is to simulate the experiment. At this point we're testing every one of those primer designs against every other oligo in the design including the other targets as well as the other primers. So in this way we're going to interrogate our system and we're going to look for primer dimers as well as mishybridization. So the fastest way to interpret all this information, we see that we have all the monomer, the homodimer, and all of the heterodimer species in the system. So the fastest way to interpret this information is to collect all of the intended hybridization. So if I select the header for intend, intended hybridization will all drop to the bottom and it's marked by true. So we're able to see then we have all of the sent strands, all of the anti-sent strands, and their associated primers. If we look down, we see the multiplex, or the effective delta G and the effective PM, and we see all of these hybridizations occur well above 60, so there should be close to 100% bound. So if we look at the percent, we're looking at 99.64%, and in that, the target itself is much less concentrated than the primer concentration. This is indicative of 99.64% of that target being taken up by this primer oligo-1. So once we have our, our set, and we see that we have good hybridization, it's a very sensitive assay, we can then scan the rest, and typically we'll scan the rest of the percent bound, and we're looking for any unwanted homodimers or any unwanted heterodimers, and it will test every possible interaction, and we see 0% right here. We could also look at all of our primers to see if we have any unintended hairpin formation, and we do not. So this is a very, uh, very sensitive, and it's, it's very, uh, It's very well binding. So we're able to look at this and decide then if we want to do probe design, that we can then go back to the probe primer design. Select the function probe. Notice we also have Pac-Man probe at the bottom of our drop-down list if you're using that. I'm just going to design regular probes. And again, the probes are designed for this particular target. So this probe will be very sensitive to glabrata and it will not mishybridize any of the albicon species. So for position range, in order to make sure that we bind to the amplicon based upon the design results that we saw earlier, We'll look again at our design results, and we'll look at the amplicon length. 
So we have amplicon lengths of 136, 111, 102. So everything at least 100 nucleotides long. So we should have plenty of room to design our probe. So I'm going for Glibrata, I'm going to use a 128, 204. So I'm going to tighten that window up a little bit. I think um, the forward primer was positioned at around 120, 122, and um, the 205. So we could even make it 130 to say 200. And in that way, we're going to ensure that the probe itself does not interfere with the binding of any of the primers or does not overlap any of the primer designs. So these numbers are again based on the design results for the primers and their position. So we can go for the next one around 290, say 340, and then 255, say 295. And this information again was taken from the design results for the primers. So once we have that information in, Again, we can ask for uh, 65, the different lengths that we're using for each one of these designs. We can input new concentration for our probe. And then we can go check our sequences again, make sure that all of our targets are checked on. But we also want to check on all of the existing primers. So this is the primer set we just designed. So when we do this, what happens is the probes are designed, and not only are they highly specific to their dedicated target, but they will not form any probe primer dimers either. So they're going to take these sequences into consideration when the new probe sequences are designed. So we go and we hit Run Design. And so with the probe design, we had three separate targets. We're expecting to get three probes for each target. So we have one, two, three, so this is set one. We have eight different sets of probes. So again, based upon the oligo length and the TM and the uh, position range that we defined, these are the probes that rose to the top that most closely meet that criteria. So we can look to see where they're binding. This one binds its anti-sense. The other one binds the sense. So Zerbata is anti-sense target. And the uh, albicons, both sense. It tells you the position where it's binding, how long it is, and again, the TM. So I'm going to, I like to use sense probes. So I notice that all three in this set are sense probes. So I'm going to select actually the second set. Add that to my experiment. So now the three probes are added in with the primer and the target. So again, it knows that it's probe. We told it what it was, and it knows what its what its target is. So if we want to then do a uh, simulation, if we go to experiment conditions, advanced settings, there's structure settings, and we can do an NPLEX. So in doing an NPLEX, we're going to be able to see how the probe and the primer relate to each other on their uh, dedicated strands. So I'm going to simulate that experiment. And again, this is going to show how all of the uh, probes and their primers interact with each other on their target strands. Uh, when you do an NPLEX, you can bind up to four different oligos to the same target. So depending on your chemistry and depending on what you're working on, uh, you should be able to simulate that in Visualon. So these 
the simulations generally take a little longer because if you're doing NPLEX, you can imagine the different combinations that VisualOp has to try to simulate starts to grow exponentially, and it's crunching through all of that as we speak. Okay, so here are the results. So again, we have our monomer species, we have our hormone dimer species, and all of our heterodimers. So included with that, we're also going to see NPLEX. So within the NPLEX, we're going to be able to see how each of these oligos interact. So here's Librata, here's Alvacon, and here's the variant, the SC5314. So we can look at the effective PM. So this is 62, 62, and 64. And the percentage of that target that's being taken up. So this is 79.63, 92.4, and 98.4. 0.67. So we can look at a view to see how it looks. We can use our toolbar to zoom in. So this is going to be our primer. And over here, we have our probe. So as you notice, as we look at these dots, the blue dots represent AT pairs, and the red dots represent GC pairs. So in looking at this, you can see that Glibrata is very AT rich. And we have a long probe. This is about 30 nucleotides right here. And we can return back to our previous zoom. So that's how you design a uh, multiplex primer and probe set in Visual Ump and how you simulate that. So uh, typically we we look for for binding that is at 95% or above. That's going to be very highly specific and sensitive. And these are the results we have here. In the following video, we'll explain how to improve or troubleshoot your uh, multiplex. So if you have any further questions on the issue, uh, feel free to contact me. I'm Norm, N-O-R-M, at dnasoftware.com. Thank you and have a nice day.